What up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Off the bat, same outfit as last video because um, I'm filming more than one video today and I'm not trying to play you guys and change outfits and I'm lazy. And yeah, so we're, I'm here on my bed because I just feel like chilling today. We're having a very easy, simple day and the videos this week are going to be on the long side because they're very chatty, talky videos. Um, but a lot of you guys have been requesting more story time videos and I love filming them because they are just so simple and easy and funny too at the same time. And I have a lot of different stories to share with you guys. Let me know if you want to hear about anything in particular, like high school stories, college stories, dating stories, like they're never ending, seriously. So the last time that I asked you guys to request what you want to hear for a story time video, some of you guys have picked up here and there when I've mentioned that I've had a lot of jobs in my past and that I was kind of a serial job quitter. Um, I'm not ashamed to say it, there was so many jobs that I went through in a period of my life where I kind of lasted at them for like one or two days and then I have a couple jobs that I was at for like one month, a week. I think the longest that I ever held down a job was a year other than YouTube and in this video I wrote them all down here. Well not all of them because there's just so many. I can go back past this period in time but what I wanted to do was the last four jobs that I had before YouTube. So I'm just going to tell you guys my experiences with these jobs, why I quit, how long I lasted and all that stuff. So yeah we're going to be talking about four jobs today. And the first one that I want to talk about is my job at Kmart. So I started at Kmart, I went on an interview and I was so, so young. I don't even remember how young. Um, but it was like, you know, my first legit job that I applied for online. I got called in for the interview. And <laughs> when I went in, I told, cause I was always into makeup even back then. So I wanted to be a cosmetic advisor is basically what they called it and that is what they hired me as so basically I was supposed to be working in the makeup aisles I was supposed to be putting away makeup and I guess going up and down the aisle asking people if they need any help and basically the makeup department was supposed to be my department so I was happy about that I thought it was a pretty cool job and when I got in there they told me that there was kind of a little switch up that they temporarily needed to put me someplace else so they actually ended up putting me in the lawn department and I would show up to work and seriously you guys, and this was during the week so Kmart was like empty, I would just stand in the lawn department and basically that was where they had, um, what are those things called, barbecues, they had tents, they had gazebos, they had deck furniture, they had hoses, basically it's like the garden area I should say and all they wanted me to do was just stand there and assist people that were buying gazebos and lawn furniture and that was basically my job all day long. So I stood there, it was really boring, hardly any people came to that section and when they, they did come to that section. I was not trained at all. Like I had zero training. The first day that I showed up, they just said stand there and answer questions. I would try to like pick up brochures talking about the lawn furniture so I could kind of like educate myself on like the sizes and what kind of temperatures they do best in and just really random stuff to kind of make the time pass. And then when somebody would come and ask questions about it, I still would not know anything. Like, can you picture, cause seriously you guys, I had no training. Picture that you just go into Kmart and just stand in that section. Like how is that a job? So I think they realized after three or four days that either I wasn't doing good in that section or I don't even know if that's a normal job and they just put me there for those couple of days. But they ended up putting me on cash register which I was really annoyed about because I was like okay I got this job to be a cosmetic advisor. If I wanted to be on a cash register there's one right down the block for me and I could do that for the same pay that I'm getting here. So I was really mad at that. It sounds messed up but they said every female that works for the store has to learn to work the cash register. So I was like okay let me tell you guys that they gave me a five minute long freaking tutorial on how to work the cash register how to accept gift cards, how to accept um, coupons, how to do credit and debit. It was a lot that they threw at me within five minutes. The girl walked away, I didn't remember anything. If you came to my cash register that day, you walked away with more change than you deserved because I would be like, I need more change, I need more change. They had like one manager running all the cash registers and they were just blowing me off. And I was like, you know what, fuck this. Like I was really annoyed because they were not paying attention to me. I did not know how to do anything and I kind of just felt so overwhelmed and nobody would help me. So 
that was actually the day that I decided once I get on my lunch break, I'm leaving and I am never coming back. I was so annoyed because I felt like they hired me as something else and then they had me working on the register, they had me in the lawn furniture and overall it was just not a good time. So while I was working in the lawn furniture department, I actually met a guy that at the time I thought he was hitting on me, but he was actually coming up to me asking why I was working at Kmart and he said that he could get me a better job. So I remember that I had that guy's information, his card or whatever, and I did end up calling him and he basically worked in group homes. So that is where we segue into the second job. So I was like, all right, cool. I never really thought of being a counselor or working in like a mental health type of field before, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. So basically they trained me and I would go into a home setting where they had people that were mentally challenged that were basically just trying to become more independent. So a lot of them were in their 20s, I think all of them actually were in their 20s and their families would pay for them, would pay for their rent, give them money, they would have little jobs and there would be around three or four counselors in the house that just helped them cook, help them ju just do their daily functions, shower, um, doing college work or I don't know, preparing for their job, just basically running the household with them. So I got trained, um, I had to learn how to ride the van or drive the van so I could take them places and that was all cool and everything. And I thought that I found a job that I was really going to like because I really liked the people there. The actual clients, they were so sweet to me. They were very affectionate. And I remember one time that one of them got screamed at so bad for coming up and giving me a hug because it was a no hug or no touch zone. And I got so mad because she did not mean anything by it. Um, but after I was done with the training and started doing the job, I noticed that the people, the counselors that worked there were complete assholes so when the families would come and visit these clients they would be the sweetest counselors in the world bend over backwards lots of conversation really friendly joking around a lot and then when the families would leave and the clients would be there they were completely different people they would throw them all in the living room tell them to go watch tv and the counselors would all hang out in the kitchen they would cook they would talk and when any one of them would come up to us they'd be like excuse me adults are talking and i'm like they're fucking adults too. I remember getting so angry one time that I just came home and I cried because I was so mad that this was going on. And the worst part is that my boss was the worst one. So I couldn't go to anyone to complain because he would come in and out of the house periodically and he would be just as disrespectful and effed up to these people more so than the counselors. So I felt like I had nobody to go to and it just got to a point where I spoke to my mom and she's like, Lee, you be the one that's different. You know, you go there and treat them with respect and do your job. And I tried for so long, you guys, and I feel guilty that I quit this job because maybe I could have made a difference, but it just, I'm a very emotional person and I could not handle it anymore. The way that these people were being treated was so unfair and disgusting that I just did not want to have anything to do with the company anymore. So um, that was a job that I quit. And let me make sure that I'm in the right order here. Yes. So after that, into the third job now. I still kind of wanted to work in the mental, not not in the, the mental health field, but in the health field because that kind of, you know, opened my eyes to it. I figured that if I could do a health field job that's more independent and that I didn't have other counselors working with me, that I would be able to do my job without having to worry about how messed up other people were at doing their job. Does that make sense? I hope so. Started doing research and I decided that I wanted to become a home health aide. So I found a class that basically was a two month training class which was a lot of fun. It was like going to college all over. There was homework and everything but the classes, the people, the teachers, everybody was really cool and I really enjoyed the whole training period. And when I jumped into my first client, I actually really, really liked her and I stayed with her for an entire year. And basically, she was not really uh, very high needs. She just really wanted more of a companion type of partner. So I would pick her up and I would take her. She always wanted to go to Target. She would like to go to Panera to eat. She would like to go out to the pond and walk around a little bit. Uh, come home, watch Wheel of Fortune, I make her dinner, and that's it. It was a couple hours a day. And I had that position for a year, so then I got sick and I had to stay away from work, or stay, stay away from work, stay home from work for about a week. So she had a replacement during that time. And the replacement nurse or home health aide 
actually convinced her and her family to put her into a nursing home. And I was so mad because she took my client from me. This is my one year client and I don't know, she was actually coming to that Home Health Aid also worked in a nursing home and that's why she gave them all the information and she's like, it's a community of people, you need to come live here with us. And I, long story short, ended up losing my client because she ended up going to a nursing home. So that's when all hell broke loose because they were trying to place me with other clients and at first I was like, alright, cool, they're going to give me somebody that's um, bed bound. And I thought that that was going to be really, really simple and easy because I'm like, if they're bed bound, you know, like, it's I, I'm not going to be like driving them all these places and they probably just want someone to watch like TV with them and have conversation and cook a little bit. So I thought it was going to be easy job. Oh my God, was I wrong. Um, the first client, because I went through a couple, the very first client, she was deaf and she was blind and she was in her 80s and she had been dropped in the hospital. She was bed bound, broken hip. Um really really sad story she had a terminal disease as well and her husband would greet me at the door he was actually home at 5 a.m. is when my shift started and he would help me cook breakfast I would have to cook for her I um, bed bathed her or bed bathed gave her a bed bath that is one of the hardest things to do by yourself it takes a lot of like manpower to be able to push a body that's almost like dead weight there was a lot of diapering everything that she was fed like her oatmeal her vitamins and medication were mixed up in it so she would have to eat every single bit and it would take me up to three hours to sit there and feed her and it was just mentally a really difficult job because she was moaning in pain all day long we could not communicate she could not she didn't even have a language at that point and I remember going home every single day and basically feeling guilty that I was running around and young and energized and living my life because I was thinking about this woman and her husband at home that job they actually it's a really sad story but she had to go into hospice which at the time I didn't know what it was so that was the end of that client then going and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about hospice as well because I ended up being placed in hospice but before that I had one other client that Oh my god you guys i can do an entire story time on this client basically long story short she was very constipated and her daughter went to the doctor who ended up giving her medication so she could go to the bathroom more easy and the day that i was there she had explosive diarrhea liquid diarrhea constantly and she was also bed bound so i had to hook her up into a machine and basically wheel her over to the bathroom the machinery that i was operating is really the type of machinery that you're supposed to be with another home health aid but i guess my company just didn't care at the time i'm not going to put their name out there or anything because i'm not here to bash them i hope that you guys i don't know i don't even know if this is a funny video it's just kind of telling you guys the crap that i've been through but anyway I remember that that entire apartment smelled like diarrhea so bad and she was so embarrassed and I felt bad because I didn't want her to be embarrassed. I one time when after I hooked her up to the machine maybe like the fourth or fifth time of the day I pushed her over to the bathroom got her onto the toilet pulled all her clothing off and I remember that it came down like waterfalls and she started crying because she was so embarrassed that she couldn't hold it until she got to the bathroom and I held myself I was like it's okay I'm a professional I lied I said I see this all the time I was just trying to make her feel comfortable and I said I'm gonna let you finish your business here and then I'm going to uh, clean up the bathroom because it was literally all over the floors and I told her um, you know I gotta clean up the bathroom clean you up just just finish up what you're doing and so I went into her bedroom and I remember I just broke down crying because I was so overwhelmed and grossed out and it was all over me it the whole apartment smelled like it and that is actually a case that was too severe to be at home and they ended up switching that person also into a nursing home because her needs were too high too special needs she needed more than one aid and uh basically i should not have been doing that job all by myself i also threw out my back uh, i had to go on comp and everything so that was crazy the very last case that this company ended up placing me in was in hospice care and I remember that I was with a 16 year old girl that had stage 4 lung cancer and hospice is basically where you go when your disease is terminal and they can't cure you so they just treat you with pain medications while you await death they try to make you as comfortable as you can that place was so sad to be in it's a hospital where everyone is dying the girl that I was working for looked like she was 
a 90 year old woman and her family would come in and ask me to read to her even though she couldn't communicate back. Um, I did have to perform catheters on her and help administer the morphine which it scares me that they gave me so much responsibility when I was not really trained the right way. Uh, I realized that the job was not working out for me. I just could not mentally handle it. I was too upset all the time thinking of everything that I was seeing during the daytimes. So my company did not train me right and it was just mentally and physically exhausting. Could not handle it anymore. Bless all you women that are a part of the medical field because it is not as easy as a lot of people think that it is. So I decided to leave that job and that's when I started taking civil service exams because I'm like, you know what? I need a job, I need a pension, I need something that has benefits, I need a good, good job. So I started taking civil service exams and I got a really high score on one of them to be a public safety officer. So I got that job and it was like six months of work to get this job because I had to pass the exam, then I had to go in for a panel interview, then I had to get a psychological exam, then I had to get a physical exam, then I had to go through another interview with like the head of the company and it took a very long time for me to get this job. I had to train because I passed, I mean I failed the first physical because I didn't really think that they were going to make me do 50 push-ups, which yes, you do have to. I can talk about that experience in another video. If you guys are taking civil service exams and you guys want to know what to expect during the physical and psychological, because the psychological was freaking insane. Okay, but anyway, um, I ended up getting the job after so, so much work and then once I got the job and I got my bulletproof vest and <laughs> I got my little car and everything, I saw too many things. I saw too many fights. I saw too, like, abuse there. It was a very dangerous, violent job and then I found out that the reason that I needed a bulletproof vest is because two months before I got the job, the place was actually shot up. So, I was actually the first woman. They were looking for a Hispanic woman to fill the slot, the quota, I don't know. I was the first woman that was hired at that position and it scared the shit out of me and I just did not last long there at all. I lasted there two days and it was so much work to get that job. So that ended there because I just, I couldn't handle it. I did not feel safe at work and I was like, I don't care how much money I get, I can't do this. I was scared, I was scared. So then the magic world of YouTube came into my life and that is when I decided to do YouTube full time. I said, I'm not gonna do it part time anymore. I'm gonna like dedicate a full nine to five schedule to YouTube, YouTube, YouTube for a summer. And if I like it, I will stick with it. If not, I'll see what else is out there and it's stuck. And here I am five years later, still doing YouTube. So that is my little story of the past four jobs that I had before YouTube. Again, there were a lot more. Let me know if you guys want to hear about those and let me know if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned. I did not mean for this video to be so long, but there's a lot. There's like a lot of stories even within these stories that I can get into, but it's like so much to fit into one video. I should have done like a video on every single job because that's how much into detail I can get with you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed listening to this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Mwah.